Baltimore Ravens getting ready to get a major upgrade to their roster really, really soon. Let's get into it because I want to talk about it ASAP. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video. Y'all went crazy with it yesterday. Y'all really did. I appreciate it. I love y'all. Let's get into it. So, yesterday, the big headline when the injury report came out for the Ravens was Lamar Jackson because John Harbaugh said, hey, Lamar Jackson, he just had a rest day, but the injury report said a little more than rest because it said Lamar Jackson had a back injury. It said Lamar Jackson had a knee injury. Now, how true is that? Hey, who knows? We'll talk about Lamar Jackson a little bit later, though. But what snuck in the injury report that I ain't even catch at first because I was so focused on Lamar Jackson. So, oh, no, what's going on with Lamar? As you can understand why we would all be focused on Lamar. But somebody who Lamar Jackson is known for his speed. He got some crazy speed, but somebody else who known for their speed and he could be even faster than Lamar Jackson, but I don't know. When Lamar Jackson was blocking for Derrick Henry, we saw Lamar's true speed. We don't never see Lamar's true speed. But anyway, talk about that another time. Keaton Mitchell. Now, we know the Baltimore Ravens, they started to designate Keaton Mitchell to return from injury reserve. So he had a 21-day window to start practicing, and he has started practicing. But in previous practices with Keaton Mitchell... He was limited. As we can understand, like, man, he had a, a major uh, surgery, uh, and it takes a long time to recover. So he's going to ease on back, right? But yesterday, Keaton Mitchell, he practiced, but <laughs> he wasn't limited, baby. Keaton Mitchell practiced in full. He practiced in full. And you see the Baltimore Ravens. They've been slowly setting this thing up for his return because, you see, with Rasheen Ali, he's been on the roster, but they keep telling us Rasheen Ali's hurt. Rasheen Ali's injured. I mean, he even was on the, the injury report yesterday, and it says that he had an ankle injury and he did not practice. They're setting this thing up to do a swap. Because Rasheen Ali, even in the game where he was active, he didn't play, like, at all. And it was, expe it was expected that he wasn't going to play. But with Rasheen Ali... That's he's getting ready to get stashed and Keith Mitchell is getting ready to get put on the roster. Now, I know there's going to be some people that say, well, Keith Mitchell. Yeah, he was really good last year. Yeah, he can certainly help to make the offense even better. But what about the defense? Does Keith Mitchell play cornerback? Can Keith Mitchell play safety? Can Keith Mitchell rush the passer? I get, I, I get it. The defense does need some help. I, I, I understand. We all understand that. But again, we all understand that Eric DaCosta, he is not done yet. He ain't done. I, I guarantee you Eric DaCosta ain't done yet, man. But And then people were saying the same thing about Deontay Johnson. Like when, when the Ravens traded for him for pretty much nothing, they're paying him nothing. They got him for nothing. It's such a potential high reward type of deal. People said the same thing. Can Deontay Johnson play cornerback? Can Deontay Johnson play safety? Can he rush the passer? And I get your concerns. We all got the same concerns. The defense is a big problem. But, again, I, I still stand on the same thing. I feel like with the defense, it's not the talent. The talent is there everywhere. All three levels of the defense, the talent is there. Pass rush is there. Linebackers. <laughs> the been struggling, but it's, it's there. But, and the secondary is certainly there as well. But, anyway, back to Keaton Mitchell. Man, I just – um. This is like we're getting even closer to the moment that we've all been waiting for, for Keith Mitchell to make his return. And I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I love it with Deontay Johnson. I love it with Keith Mitchell. These are two nice upgrades for the Baltimore Ravens roster. But I love that we get to have conversations now. We get to have real conversations about how these players will fit into Baltimore Ravens offense. That's, that's such a beautiful thing because y'all know already. Y'all done been there with us. We done all been there together where we didn't have these conversations. But now we actually get to go back and forth about, man, how can we get this guy involved? How can we get this weapon involved? How, how can we get him? How will he fit into the offense? What's his role going to be? We got so many different players to pick and choose from that makes the Baltimore Ravens that much more of a strong team. Again, they not done on defense yet, but... More help will be on the way. Speaking of help, somebody that has certainly helped the Baltimore Ravens is Lamar Jackson. And Lamar Jackson, he has just, he's been amazing this year. I mean, we pretty much say that every single year for Lamar Jackson, but this year it's been like on a whole nother level. And to say that about Lamar Jackson, like we are really spoiled 
as Ravens fans to have Lamar Jackson as the quarterback. Um, and again, when you look at the Anthony Richards situation, I'm not here to take a shot at him, even though what he said, like, and everybody's been saying it, like, you should have just lied. You should have lied. Don't don't say, oh, man, I came out because I was tired, straight up. Like, I appreciate honesty, but, like, ooh, that, that was rough. Imagine, and I know he wouldn't, and I know he never would, but imagine if Lamar said something like that. Oh, gosh. You see how bad it's been for Anthony Rich? Oh, my goodness. Because people be already be ready to tell Lamar down at any second they get for stuff that's not even close or remotely close to that. So, oh, man. But it makes you appreciate Lamar Jackson that much more because, and Anthony Richardson said, hey, hey they, he was doing a lot of running. He was doing a lot of running, and he was just tired. And Lamar Jackson, when he runs, he does a lot of running too. Whether he's scrambling, whether he got to run away from all the pressure that he be getting because of the offensive line, they could have a lot of rough moments still. Even though they've improved, they could still have a lot of rough moments. But um, Lamar Jackson does so much. So, but, but he's still out there every single play. Throwing, running, making stuff happen every single play. Does not complain, does not say, oh man, I'm tired. But anyway, Lamar Jackson. He ended up winning AFC, not Offensive Player of the Week, because he got that a couple times already. That's cool. But he won AFC Offensive Player of the Month for the month of October. Uh, he had 1,241 passing yards, 12 passing touchdowns. Uh, his completion percentage was 67.2. Had 193 rushing yards, and his average quarterback rating was 126.5. And these numbers, they tell part of the story, but when we watch the games, we can see, like, this dude, he been tearing it up. He has been killing it. And Lamar Jackson, go ahead and get another offensive player of the month. If you want to get it for November, cool. You want to get it for December, too? Cool. And you want to get it all the way up until February? No problem. So we tried to start this video off with some positive news with the Baltimore Ravens. And we did. And we do love all of that positivity. But then comes this. So Lamar Jackson, he didn't practice yesterday. John Harbaugh said, oh, it was just a rest day. But then the injury report came out and said back in knee. And we're like, oh, what? Like, hmm, okay. So and, and if it was just a rest day, then the injury report should say not injury related, NIR. But it didn't. So, Okay. He should be back tomorrow. So tomorrow came, which is today, and Lamar Jackson still has not practiced. It still says back. Well, no, we actually haven't got the official report yet, but we should get that a little later today. Um, let's read Jeff Zrebik's report. He said, uh, Lamar Jackson is not practicing for a second straight day. Uh, Harbaugh described yesterday as a rest day for Jackson, but he's not th out there again today. With two games in five days, Jackson's status obviously is becoming a storyline. It certainly is because there's a lot of unknown right now, and it is very concerning right now. Again, um, obviously, Lamar Jackson knows the ins and outs of the offense. The offense goes through him. But with newly acquired Deontay Johnson, then this it, it, it limits what Deontay Johnson is going to be able to do when Lamar Jackson does get back out there. But uh, even more importantly, Lamar Jackson ain't practicing. And that's big. So tomorrow, tomorrow is a, a huge day in all of this because if he practices tomorrow, okay, all right, hey, all right, y'all boys, we good. Okay, we straight up. But if he doesn't practice tomorrow, that's a big yikes. Because if he doesn't practice on Friday, then it would mean most likely that he wouldn't be playing against the Broncos. And the Baltimore Ravens just simply can't afford that. I do think he, he'll be out there on Friday. I think he'll play against the Broncos. But I also thought that he would be back out there today. And he's not. But maybe, just, may, just maybe, the Baltimore Ravens are like, maybe Lamar Jackson maybe a little sore or something like that. Because, I mean, he do be having to carry the team like every week. I mean, shout out to Derrick Henry. Dude, he be helping out a lot. But he, Lamar Jackson, he does a lot more than the average player. Certainly a lot more than the average quarterback, as we already know. But um, with them getting ready to play the Broncos on Sunday, and that's going to be a physical game, too. But then they turn around four days later uh, and have to play the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, that's going to be another tough game. Um, maybe, just may hopefully, hopefully the Baltimore Ravens are just being extra precautious. And maybe they are wanting Lamar Jackson to get some extra rest because right before they go on that, that little 10-day break. So hopefully that's what it ends up being. We are not going to hear from John Harbaugh today because today is Thursday. Um, the offense and defense and special teams coordinators are going to speak today, that being Todd Munkin, Zach Orr, uh, and Chris Horton. So we won't hear from John Harbaugh until tomorrow. But hopefully, just hopefully, we'll be seeing Lamar Jackson back.
So now we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. If you'd like to be part of it for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, if you'd like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids and send your question directly on there. For everybody else, you can send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Now, the only people where it's guaranteed that their questions will be featured in the videos is the Team Keep It Clean patrons. For everybody else, I try my best because we, we've been covering everybody's question. Ain't nobody been left out. But... I just got to put that out there because we had a lot of questions. Let's get into it, though. This next question came from my guy, 101, who is a Team Keep It Clean patron. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the family are doing amazing. I got a quick question, and I'll probably get my answer soon. But with the addition of Deontay Johnson and Keaton Mitchell, what moves do you think the Ravens will make on the 53-man roster to fit both of them in? Well, for Deontay Johnson, they already put Michael Pierce on injury reserve, so that opened up a roster spot. And for Keaton Mitchell, um, like we said earlier in this video, I, I assume that it's going to be Rasheen Ali. They're just going to flip-flop spots, and then he'll be on the roster. How Call. Next question came from my guy, King Yari. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the family are well. I'm going to keep it short. Send the house for Max Crosby. Be blessed, my purple brother. Hey, look, like, there's some moves. Like, I know people have been talking about Zadarius Smith. Like, and he would be somebody that the Ravens could possibly go after if the Browns would be willing to do that. Apparently, the Browns looking for a, a good day three pick, whatever. I just, to me, it, it that wouldn't really move me that much. I'd be cool with it, but... With Max Crosby, like, that would be like, I'd be like, okay, Ravens, let's, like, if they did something like that, I, oh, yeah, but they probably won't. Yeah, he also said, I'm um, praying everything is well with the family. Yeah, in my opinion, uh, Zach Orr needs to step down or something. Get a play call in the Dean Pease or allow Pease to recreate our scheme or something. Y'all remember when Dean Pease was defensive coordinator before? <laughs> it wasn't pretty, man. But anyway, he said, uh, it can't be this bad. Uh, we was just the number one defense in the league, a great st stat in the professional league. We lose two complimentary, two complimentary players who wasn't X Factors. What? Oh, hold on. You talking about Patrick Queen and Geno Stone? Even though both of them were good, because I mean, Jadavian Clowney, he was he was nice too. So Raven lost some significant guys that made a big impact on that team last year. Anyway, he said, and now we are pretty much dead last. How? Win or lose, hurry back, Marlowe and Nate. Hopefully the defense turns it around soon. And what is going on with the Browns field? Uh, but in my conclusion, make the trade. There is one player we need in order to revamp everything to turn things around. And I don't know who it is exactly because it's not just one player. It's more than one player. But Eric Picasso, he got us. He, he got us. It's coming. It's on the way. He said, if not now, then I worry later in the season if the defense looks like this. Then Lamar has to be Superman again and wheel us to the playoffs because defense just ain't going to cut it. Make the trade, EDC. And just like the Ravens secondary, apparently, I'm out. The DJ trade implications. Next question came from Mars Rose. He said, ain't great. Hope you're doing good as the Ravens offense is about to be with Deontay Johnson. Amazing. I, I like that one. Uh, he said, I really love this trade. Deontay has conditioned from playing in the AFC North since 2019. Good point. Uh, on a team that typically makes the postseason. He's got playoff experience. We all saw that stat about him leading the NFL in open in his open score. And he did it with some really mid quarterbacks. About to retire Ben Roethlisberger, uh, Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, and now Bryce Young and Andy Dalton. Lamar is his best quarterback. Boom. Yeah. That's, yeah, you ain't lying. And that's like by far, too. Uh, he said, also, scheme wise, this is huge. Nelly is a great role player, but he doesn't scare cornerbacks. Why, uh, excuse me, we are something like 30th or 32nd in percentage of plays ran in three wide receiver sets. I know Lamar loves his tight ends, and we have a room full of good ones, but imagine this Lamar at quarterback, Henry at running back, Zay, Bateman, Deontay at wide receiver, Andrews at likely, whichever one is playing better that week, we'll have them rotate. Munkin has the resources at his disposal now to give Lamar access to more passing plays because now instead of Nelly or Cola running routes, you have a guy who, as we've already established, Establish is always open. This is dangerous. I love how you put it. I love how you put everything together. That's similar to what we were talking about earlier. Like, we got so much weapons at our disposal. This is such a beautiful thing. Uh, he said, I hope we light up the Denver Broncos just to stun on the AFC. Pass our tan, can cover Zay, Deontay, Andrews, and likely have a great weekend. You know what? The Ravens need to have an even better one. Next question came from Raven Pride. He said, hope you and the family are doing well. Just got one quick question. What about a trade for Tredavious White from the L.A. Rams who wants out of L.A.? Uh, thanks for taking my question, and God bless you and your fam and team. Keep it clean. Appreciate you, Raven Pride. Uh, he ain't been so good this year. And, hey, maybe a change of scenery could help him out. But, um, I mean, it would be quality depth. And he was once really good, so maybe the Ravens could really bring out that, that out of him if they decided to go that route. And, I saw something. I don't know if it was credible or not because uh, I, ain't, I ain't seen nothing on my own. But something said the Ravens and some other teams were involved in the mix for Tredavious White. But I, I feel like more important, and not, not to say that they can't still do both because they still can, but pass rush is the biggest thing. 
Um, and then you could add to the secondary too, whether it's a corner or a safety. Um, but yeah, just just get everything and get everybody. Next question came from my guy Keontae. He said, you know, I got a little speculation here. I noticed you can't tell EDC no. The King was supposed to be a Raven last season. It didn't happen, but look where we are now. So that brings me to someone that I actually wanted during preseason because of the rumors that that guy being Chase Young. Oh yeah, the Ravens were talking to Chase Young or his people last year's trade deadline. I'm pretty sure. Was it last year? I think it was last year's trade deadline, too, I believe. He said, he is available and looking pretty healthy. I figure the only reason we didn't grab him is because Clowney, who we don't have this season. Uh, so with him being on the block again, do we take another jab at him? You know what? That really wouldn't be surprising. We, would, we just couldn't see that, that, that low effort, though. That low effort is like, when you see stuff like that, it's like, oh. Because it's one thing, if you're really trying your hardest and you just get beat. You, you can't beat your guy. Uh, you, you just can't win your one-on-one -on -one matchups. But if you're giving low effort, then it's like, oh. Man, like, you're not even trying. But, hey, remember, they said that same thing about Jadavian Clowney. They said, oh, he gives low effort. He's always giving up on plays and stuff and da da da, -da. And I said, Ravens could change him. And guess what they did? Jadavian Clowney was amazing last year. If they get a Chase Young. I mean, if you want, get Jadavian Clowney and Chase Young. Why not go two for one? Next question came from my guy, Javo. He said, guess what Deontay Johnson's middle name is? Lamaris. Hey, Stuff is lining up like it's it's meant to be Ravens with the Super Bowl this year. Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, middle name is Lamar. He just talked about Deontay Johnson. Kendrick Lamar going to be the one performing at the Super it, it just makes too much sense. He also said the trade deadline is almost here. Everyone wants Clowney back, but I'm pretty sure EDC asked about him and Clowney said he's happy being back at home. Two other names that nobody is talking about uh, as they both are in their final year. One player is Aziz Ojolari from the Giants and also the Giant known as Calais Campbell who is looking for a ring and is a force on the inside. I, I can see Ravens doing Calais Campbell um, because he would be cheap. Uh, they love, 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 love Calais Campbell. Um, and the interior of their defensive line is, is weak right now. Travis Jones still is dealing with his ankle injury, so that's rough. Um, Brent Irving been not sure what the status of him with the whole concussion was uh, but Michael Pierce is out he, he's out for at least the next four games so Ravens are pretty thin up front so I can see them doing something there they did just sign um, the defensive lineman to the practice squad though but um yeah that could be one that they could uh, a move that they could possibly make in Aziz Ojulari from the Giants is that the one that went to to Georgia because I've been hearing a bit about him but yeah that is also uh, another option so we'll see where the Ravens end up going next question came from my guy Nate he said hey brother hope all is well checking in from East Auckland New Zealand oh hey appreciate you Nate uh, he said I've been looking over the schedule and here's where I think we might end up looks like Denver and the Giants are the only clear locks uh, I'm thinking we split with the Steelers and take the Chargers as their passing game is weak hey shout out to G-Row uh, he said that leaves the Bengals Eagles and Texans which I'm not confident about as they can air it out, and our secondary is Cheeks. Uh, if we drop those games, we'd be heading into the final match against Cleveland at 9-7. and seven. Ooh, I just... That, ooh, that that don't even sound right for no Baltimore Ravens team. Nah, so, uh, nah, I, 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 no, no. And, I mean, anything's possible, but... Uh, um, and he said, now our front four are beat up, along with our secondary leaking points. Uh, like a C. He said, it feels like there's a real chance it could all come down to that last game to keep the season alive. What are your thoughts? How do you see the rest of the season playing out? Love your work. Hey, appreciate that, Nate. Um, as far as these games, I think they get the Broncos. And, and I mean, we can we only know how the team is right here, right now. Obviously, things could change for better or for worse as the season goes along. But most likely for better. We're getting even better. Um, yeah. Uh, so I say Denver and the Giants. Yeah, they should get those. Uh, yeah, I could see them splitting with the Steelers. Um, with the Bengals. That's the, you know Bengals going to bring it, man, because Bengals ain't like getting beat up on, but Ravens going to be at the crib, so they got the advantage. Um, they got the better team, and this will be such a great opportunity to stomp that season out, like end it, really end it, even though most Bengals fans are looking at it like, oh, yeah, our season's pretty much done. Uh, even They would have to be like perfect to really end it off to make anything happen, but if Ravens could put it away, that would be great. Um, but as far as the Eagles and Texans, yeah, it all just depends as we get closer to, to those games now the Eagles are a home game the Texans are an away game um so it, everything just depends on so much both of them got good quarterbacks good receivers even though the Texans they took a hit at their depth at wide receiver with Stephon Diggs being out but they still got Nico Collins who was an uh, amazing just straight up baller oh but ain't he out too no 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 he's healthy I think 
No, I know he got hurt a couple weeks ago. I, you know what? Now I don't even know the status of him. So anyway, uh, Texans, regardless, they still going to bring it. And they're going to be at the crib, too, on Netflix. We're all going to be watching a game on Netflix. That's going to be crazy. But um, so much just depends. It, it's really hard to say right now because of how the team is right here, right now. They could change from week to week. I mean, even though they ain't really change from week to week. The offense been amazing and the defense been, <laughs> yeah. But hopefully, after the trade deadline, after Eric DeCosta make a couple more moves, then we could be talking about the defense in a different light, and they'll be much brighter than they are right now. Is this Zach Orr's fault? No. Next question came from my guy, uh, Joey. He said, I ain't great. Hope all is well with y'all, and what a brutal game. I just want to follow up on a point in my last message to you and answer the question from your post-game thoughts. Is it Zach Orr's fault that the defensive backs are dropping picks? No, it's not. He is supposed to design the overall scheme using talent available to him and call the plays to make sure his guys are close to the ball as possible. The schemes we see playing out before our eyes are literally having the defensive backs near the ball, whether it's Brandon Stevens close calls and sticky coverage or a safety out in space where they are designed to be when a ball flies in their direction like Eddie and Kyle's cases this past game. The scheme is working, but they aren't playing or catching the ball. I call these fundamentals of being a defensive back. Be where you're supposed to be and break up the play or catch the ball. These kind of issues are supposed to be delegated and worked out by the secondary coach to run extra drills or something to make sure those mistakes don't repeat. Well, what they did just yesterday in practice, um, they, they, Jeff Zrebik said that the defensive backs, they were out there uh, catching a bunch of extra footballs. So they, they, they've been working on it. So hopefully it's on the way. Uh, he said, just a thought on how important the effectiveness of a position coach can be. Uh, we'd be having different discussions about the pass defense if they're catching even half of the eight plus, maybe more interceptions they've dropped so far this season. Uh, thanks for the reading. Hopefully we can bounce back strongly against the Broncos in their killer pass defense. Maybe y'all guys can learn a thing or two. Sincerely, Joey. Appreciate this. Now, with the drop picks, those are not Zach Orr's fault at all. But what about the guys ev literally every single week that are running wide open? Cleveland, this is for you. Next question came from my guy Ejon. He's heading Graven and highest me again. West Coast Raven. I'm not even mad at the loss at this time. The wide outs drop passes and the defenders dropped at least four interceptions. Super duper Kyle. More like super goofy, clumsy Kyle. LOL. Bring back Justin Matabike. This Namdi guy is suspect. Oh my goodness. You were just going at people's throats. He said Eddie Jackson and Nelson Aguilar can't be trusted to make plays. Todd Munkin had too many cute play calls in crucial situations. Now that part, I'm with you all day on that one. They, they did get too cute. Like right, you said, and Justin Tucker is now a 45-yard and closer kicker. Oh, that's sad. That's sad right there. Um, I'm With Justin Tucker, I ain't going to trip too much off of that yet. I mean, even though earlier on this season, like, it was ugly. But then Justin Tucker, he earned our trust back. So I ain't going to let it go that easily. My trust for Justin Tucker, I still trust him. But now I just got to see. If he miss another one and it's from like 49, 50 yards, then, yeah, my trust is probably going to be gone again. But hopefully we don't even have to have that conversation. Uh, he said, my question is, between the non-pass non rush and the secondary, who played worse? We'll get him next time, and I'm out. Um, between the non-pass rush and the secondary, um, I would say probably the secondary because the secondary, um, they had even more opportunities to make plays. Uh, probably because there was no pass rush. So since, since there was no pass rush, secondary, they, was, they had to be out there for longer, but James Winston got to throw that ball a little bit more because he wasn't getting pressure, so he's just sitting there chilling. Uh, but the secondary had a lot of picks that they had opportunities to catch, and they just kept dropping. And those are big plays. Those are game-changing plays, uh, and they literally game-saving plays too. But they just couldn't make it happen. Next question came from my guy Christopher. He said, Good morning. I was thinking about how we could go away from or how we go away from Henry often and in odd moments. Could it be the ego of Todd Munkin getting in the way? Uh, wanting to show that his play calling uh, is just as important as Lamar and Henry. Well, his play calling is just as important as uh, Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry. Why? Because if he's calling like silly stuff then that's going to impact the game in a negative way uh, but if he's calling good stuff stuff that's working sticking not trying to fix something that's not broken then that can affect the game in a positive way but um it's just it's just been a ravens thing it, it, it's crazy it's not even necessarily a todd munkin thing but it's just been a ravens thing uh in a lot of spots where they get away from what's working um they just leave it alone and it's like hey hold, hold on no 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 this is actually going good we can stick with this let's do this um so with the baltimore ravens something that and this has been an issue for years uh and it, it doesn't happen all the time but it happens enough uh to where they, they'll get away from the obvious like get away from what's obviously working um so hopefully and i know that's a big hopefully they don't continue that because again for the most part 
they they they've been sticking with what's working this season. But it's it's in these spots, it's in these toughest games, it's in these toughest moments, it's in the playoffs a lot of times where they get away from it too. So hopefully they've gotten all their getting away from it out this regular season and come playoff time, you got to make it there first, but come playoff time, you stick to what works. This question came from my guy Derek. He said, Angry Raven, how are you today, my brother? Hope all is well with you and the wife, the kids, the dogs, but let's get right to it. Uh, what is it with this Marcus Williams drama? He said, hmm, to me it could be one of four things, if not Oh, number one, Marcus Williams could possibly need some surgery. You never know. Hobbs likes to keep things secret, and maybe he decided to sit Williams against the Browns, probably thinking if he needs surgery and to have him back in a month from now, it'll be better just to rest him. Uh, but he wasn't on an injury report. And if he was on an injury report and he needed surgery, then Harper's will get into some trouble. So let's eliminate that one. He said, number two, do you think he could have said something out of line about Zach or scheme, and that could have rubbed Hobbs or, or the wrong way? Yes, I do. Uh, number three, he said, do you think they just wanted to see if he's really the issue or not while Marlowe and Bate were out to see, okay, my two cornerbacks are out. Let me sit my free safety to just see something here. I doubt that, though, but who knows? Ah, maybe. I'm still leaning with number two. And number four, last but not least, uh, do you think Marcus Williams, along with a day two or three pick, could be part of a package deal to get a premier pass rusher like Max Crosby, uh, Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa? And he said, P.S., Jim still owes us from that Bolden trade back in 2013, LOL. Or a true center field safety like Buda Baker, or the Wolverine version of the safeties, the Honey Badger. What are your thoughts? And, oh, last question, Jay-Z or Lil Wayne? Wayne, by far, by far, better than everybody. Everybody, anybody, everybody. Anyway, um, them trading him, they would have to, because his salary is guaranteed for this year, so they would have to eat that and be willing to eat that. I don't, I don't think they want to do that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to get one of those guys that you made, especially Max Crosby. But, yeah, I, I just think it was more so um, him, a mix of number two and three. But he might have said something out of line. They were like, oh, oh, you want to talk back to me? Oh, okay, I got something for you. But also to just really try to see if he was the biggest issue. Next question came from my guy, Steven. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the family. I'm still feeling Sunday's loss, especially with the Squealers winning last night. But anyways, as much as this may be an unreal scenario, imagine if we could hire Bill Belichick as our new defensive coordinator and get ourselves a nice pass rusher like a Max Crosby. With the potential our offense has and with a great defensive mind in Belichick, we would be unstoppable. We would. That'd be nice. But, well, yeah, I mean, you already answered your own question. He said, as it is, uh, Bill is always praising Lamar Jackson. So why not help Lamar on this team get a Super Bowl ring? Zach Orr could be given a new role as a defensive assistant or something, and he could learn from Bill Belichick and eventually get his role back. Mm. I don't think if, if, if Zach Orr got demoted, he wouldn't get promoted again with the Ravens, the defensive coordinator. Like, that'd be it. Um, he, yeah. And, and if it, next time he got an opportunity to be a defensive coordinator, it would end up being somewhere else. It would not be with the Baltimore Ravens. Because if, if you get demoted, you're not going to get promoted, uh, especially with the same team later on. Uh, anyway, he said, I know it's just dreaming, but I wish our front office would think outside the box and stop being so soft. I appreciate all your hard work and hope some big changes come soon to this team. We're going to see real soon, man. It's time to go. Next question came from my guy, Sean. He said, hello, Engraven. Hope you are doing well. Uh, I certainly am not after watching this defense. I think it's time we let Zach Orr go and get someone else to be the new defensive coordinator. I can see if this team was inexperienced and brought in a new coach like Orr and had these problems, but we are not. We are looking to compete for a Super Bowl, and if we continue like this, then we won't stand a chance. This team was just in the AFC Championship nine months ago. That's a good point. Um, especially about them being experienced, them just having been in the AFC Championship, and now them doing an experiment at the defensive coordinator position. He also said, uh, we just had the best defense in the league last year, and now we are by far the worst. While the players are at fault for not executing and catching interceptions when they should, the scheme is more at fault, in my opinion. These players are not that bad to where they drop off their levels that bad outside of Eddie Jackson. We'd we'll love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for reading and answering my questions, and hope you have a great rest of your day. I appreciate it, Sean. And yeah, I, I agree, uh, especially about the scheme. Um, I know, yeah, last game, I mean, really this season there have been a lot of drop picks, but last game certainly was the worst. Um, but, again, the scheme has had guys running wide open every single week, every single game. So it's just it's the scheme more than any single thing, in my opinion. Next question came from my guy, Davin. He said, hey, this is Davin from Be More Again. Hope all is well with you and your family. I watched a video the other day talking about our new wide receiver we just got. And in the video, um, the video below said we think Deontay Johnson is not in the top 10 of receivers because of the bad quarterback he's had in his career. Do you think... Uh, he can make his way to the top 10 by having Lamar getting him the ball better. Ooh, top 10 in receivers. That would depend on so much. This year, I would say no. It would be extremely, extremely tough to get the top 10 in receivers. 
And right now, he's not even the number one on the team that he just got traded to. And he would have to learn the playbook and get acclimated and all that. And it's only half a season left. So, no, I, I do not think he can make it to the top ten of receivers this year. Uh, I just think that's it, not impossible, but just highly, highly unlikely. Um, now, everything would depend, in my opinion, on next year, where he went next year. Whether he stayed with the Ravens or went somewhere else, he's probably going to go somewhere else. But that's what it would depend on, not this year. So with the Ravens right now, because of the situation, I would say no. But for Deontay Johnson himself, it depends on his situation next season. Next question came from my guy, B-Money. He said, does the Deontay Johnson trade put the Ravens over the hump to Super Bowl contention? Or do you think EDC got more tricks up his sleeve? No, I, I don't think that would put them over the hump. I think it helps them a lot. It helps their offense become even stronger which they're going to need, especially if the defense keep doing what they've been doing. Um, but I, I think EDC's definitely got more on the way. And he said, should the Ravens try a different approach, like go back to last year's defense? What should they do to get back to that powerhouse defense? Well, I mean, it, for them to go back to last year's defense, uh, it would have to be a, a different play caller at the helm. And he's a head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, so that's not possible. But something's got to give with this scheme. I don't know how they will fix it, though.